All right, so let's get started. Um, so this is Rav Dessler's, um, it's the first part of a whole kuntrus that he writes on, on Bechira. So captured in Mechtov um, Me'eliyahu, it's in the first chilek. Um And <clears throat> so, yeah, I'd say without, you know, that anymore, let's sort of jump into it. He really sort of develops the idea by giving us sort of a, an example situation, really sort of setting it up, really helping us to develop, um, I guess, the context for it. And then he starts to really dive into um, how we understand what, what Bechira really means. And, um, you know, so I, I think it's probably gonna take us more than one week. So we'll start this week and then in two weeks after Thanksgiving, I think we'll probably, we'll try to finish up. So he starts out by saying, So he says, let's, you know, to really understand this, let's get into a sort of a situation that is common um, for, uh, you know, that, that, that's common, um, something that you have to make a, a, a choice about or something that sort of we, we struggle with. And back in his day, um, you know, it's still an issue today, but certainly back in his day when he, uh, you know, back in the, you know, 30s, 40s, and 50s, um, it's about smoking, right? And smoking was really um, a big issue. Misha, Ashin Sigariot Harbe, somebody who smokes a lot of cigarettes, right? That's, uh, that's the situation that, again, the context that he wants to give. Um, to the extent that by the time, you know, evening comes, his chest is hurting from, from smoking so many cigarettes. So, he decides at night, right, that he's in so much pain, it's so, you know, the, the discomfort is so, is so, uh, so much, that he makes a decision, you know what, tomorrow I am not taking a single cigarette, right? I'm not going to smoke again. He knows that, uh, he knows what's causing it, and he realizes that if he smokes, there's a cause and effect. He's going to, uh, he's going to feel awful again the following evening. So, he gets up the next morning, after a short time, the desire to smoke starts to awaken within him. Right? He's, he's become accustomed to it, and therefore that's part of where the desire is coming from. So he doesn't, it just as an aside, he doesn't really get into the, I guess, the whole idea of, you know, chemical addiction, that sort of thing. But he certainly is, you know, at least hinting at the idea and understanding that there is this, uh, you know, issue of getting used to something like smoking. Um, it's not really going to play a, a tremendous part, though, um, in his, um, you know, in the... That part's not going to really play a, uh, a real role in how he understands um, Bechira. But, you know, I think at least he's sort of hinting at the idea that that uh, addiction is certainly part of at least this context. So, so if we think about it, then we realize that on the one hand, he's got this desire to smoke. It's a, it's, he's used to it. Um, and on the other hand, he knows that he doesn't want to feel awful um, every night. You, we can sort of... Um, understand that he's probably at some point going to say to himself, sort of rationalize and say, you know what, I'm only going to smoke one, right? Once the desire to smoke starts to wake up within him, um, he'll probably say, you know what, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll smoke once. Because, right? Smoking one is not going to, you know, cause a whole bunch of distress in me later on. And from there, right, he, he, he goes and he, and he smokes. But then, you know, a short time later, he's going to want that same desire starts to come up again, and he's going to want a second cigarette. 
Again, he'll say to himself, you know, but it's just it's just one more. But this will continue throughout the day. And again, at night, he's going to feel awful. So, so what will happen tomorrow? He knows that if he even gives in once, he's going to fall back into the trap. But nevertheless, we know it, it, it's, um, it, it happens often that um, you, know, you just sort of fall back into that, into that same routine. So there's really, what's going on is there's two different desires uh, within him. There's on the one hand, a desire that you don't want to feel awful. Um, and on the other hand, there's the desire that, um, you know, the desire to smoke. And between them, it's very clear, right? I mean, he, he, he has, or at least he should be able to have a lot of clarity um, on, on, you know, what's, which direction he should be going. What we would think in reality is that, um, we would think that at least um, the desire to feel healthy, feel good, um, should outweigh, strongly outweigh, right, the desire to smoke. So if that's the case, you know, rationally thinking about this, what uh, causes the desire to smoke, which is really the weaker argument, the weaker desire, um, what causes it to, to really be, become the stronger one? Hello, rak hata haklusha zoo, Mahu agorim sheyochaz ha'adam bisvara hametes. So we can also ask ourselves, because really what's what's going on is this is a pretty thin argument, um, you know, really sort of a a a, a, um, a deception, if you will, that um, the whole idea of smoking in the first place, because you know that it's it's not uh, you know it, it certainly isn't ending well for him, certainly you know on a day to day basis, so. Really, it's not even two real desires. What's really going on is, on the one hand, you know what it takes to be healthy. On the other hand, you know that the other choice is really a poor choice. So it's, it really shouldn't even be two choices that are, that are sitting in front of him. Right? He knows full well, again, rationally speaking, he knows full well what the right choice is. Right? Um, so it's clearly we see that someone um, has the ability, a person has the ability to sort of rationalize or sway their rational thinking um, away from what really is the clear path. And the way he sort of couches this is that the, you know, you're sort of imagining, it's, it's really your imagination that's sort of covering up and he really, you know, he calls it for what it is. It's really a sheker. It's a non-truth. It's, it's, a, it's a lie that in this case, it's, it's a desire to do something that is very, it's full hearty. It's um, certainly unhealthy and all that. Shnei haritzonos lefonov. He has two desires in front of him. But in his heart, he is going to basically be swayed away from one of them. In other words, he's not going to make that rational decision. He's going to be swayed in one direction. Right? He's not going to cling to what is truly, you know, which is actually the reality, the truth of the, of the situation. And he's going to sort of go, um, he's going to cling to the, to the other choice. So Rav Deser asks, "Me garam lo es zeh," and you know what 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 causes him to do this? So we're really trying to take a, a deeper look, and it's not just I think the psychology of it. We're going to see as he develops this idea, it's not so much just the psychology of it. It's also just within us 
um, you know, he's using the example of a smoker, but as we, as we'll see, um, we can really put other, you know, ideas into this, but, but it, and, and, and it could be anything. It could be that, you know, somebody who desires to eat, um, you know, trephus or somebody who desires to, you know, to Gaza, to say Lashon Hara, something like that. So it doesn't have to be necessarily something that, um, you know, is, um, you know, sort of a, a health-related issue, or, or, or you know, or, or, you know, it doesn't have to be the smoking. Um, that's just one of the examples he's giving, and that's sort of a context I think that we can all sort of relate to. So, lower at Sonos Garnim, Elaha Adam who Hagorim la Atzmo. It's not what he's saying is it's not the desires that are swaying him. It's not like one desire is greater than the other, because the point that Rav Desser is making is. The desire to, to not feel awful at the end of the day <clears throat> should be the one that wins out hands down. So it's not the desires that are, um, it's not the one desire is more powerful than the other. It's that the person himself is, the per- is, is what's causing the decision to be made. Lomar he has the ability to, to rationally think about this and understand that there really is no, um, there's no toelis to, to, to smoking, right? There's nothing good that comes out of smoking. The reality of the situation does not stem with sort of the imagination, the desire and the imagination that goes with it. And at the end of the day, um, you know, if I choose to smoke, then we, you know, we, I, I realize I'm not going to feel well tonight. And therefore, certainly I shouldn't be smoking. So he's really driving the point home. It's not the desires, it's the person himself. Shehutos, and he even realizes the mistake that he's making. Right? He, he, he understands it. It's not like he thinks, oh, smoking is okay or, or smoking won't cause a problem. He realizes very clearly what the problem is. So the desire itself is not strong enough to overcome that. A person has the ability to, to uh, you know, to sort of grasp onto the truth of the matter, the reality of the situation, <clears throat> and that will enable him automatically to, to not, you know, to to, to leave the, the 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 other desire, which is a very which is a much weaker desire. <clears throat> and this is really the point that I think is driving home is that the whole thing is really about das. It's about getting it clear in your mind beforehand so that when the desire hits, you already have the clarity in your mind for what you need to be doing and what, what decision to make. <clears throat> so this is where the Rav Dessler sort of um, you know, draws the, 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 the line in the sand and says, here's, the, this is, if we want to understand what is Bechira, Bechira isn't simply, um, I wake up in the morning and I decide what I want to have for breakfast. Bechira is that I have multiple desires, maybe two desires that I'm thinking about, one that I know rationally is the right thing to do, and one that I know is the wrong thing to do, and that it is not, there's no basis in reality that I should want to do it, um, <clears throat> once I've, once I have it and I have the ability to make that choice, that decision, that's Bechira. So let me just pause there. Um, I, I think he develops it with a lot of words, but I, um, but I think he's also really trying to spend the time with us to sort of make us realize where Bechira is. Does, does that make sense to everyone? Mm-hmm. Well, All right. So let's, uh, all right, so let's try and take this a step further. So this is, you know, what, what he's really been trying to drive home is that this is really 
um, something that is, you know, up to our capabilities. And, and we have the capability to make these distinctions and make these choices. Ve'en siba shetasavivos, and it has nothing to do with the surrounding, you know, the situation or the, you know, the context or anything else. It's, it's really all about us. Alehu ba'atzmo, hano ha'siba reishon Allah. Ve'ze baduk menusa la'adam, asher gover al yitzro, afilu rak pam echos. And I think this is a really interesting point that he makes here, which is that <clears throat> it's really, um, you know, it's really up to the person and the, you know, what tests them or what, you know, everyone's desires are going to be a little bit different. Um, so what tests you may not be the same thing that tests me. And, but as, you know, the person who is able to, um, to overcome that that desire, even one time, that's the person who is going to be able to do it. You have to have mastered it at least once though. So in the case of our smoker, he would have at least one time had to have been able to say, you know what, I'm not taking the cigarette because I know what the effects will be. And once you do that once, you then have the ability to sort of like that gives you, that opens your mind. Uh, I think that is what Rav Defster is saying, is that gives you the ability to then do it over and over again. But if, you, if, you, if you've never been able to overcome your yates or for that particular desire, even once, it's almost impossible to do it. Like it, that's the hardest part is to do it once. Once you've got that, you can sort of build upon it. But it's, and I'm not sure if I'm explaining it right, um, Let's go on a little bit weiter, and hopefully it'll it'll make a bit more sense. Shemargish bar belivovo shuhu atzom misrachik mina dimyan. It's like you have to do it once in order for your mind to get the clarity, to be able to distance yourself away from. Again, it's sort of this. What he's painting the picture of is on the one hand you've got a desire that's really based on truth on emes, and you've got another one that's really based on nothing but nothing more than lies. Um, and that's really just your imagination. And so in order to separate between the two, you have to have at least had the discipline to make that decision once. Um, and then, um, you know, you can sort of, you, you have the ability then to make that decision to grasp onto what's true, you know, even, even when it's, when you, even in the face of strong desires. Of a Misha Lo, he's Gabra, Al Yitzra Meola, but somebody who's never been able to overcome it even once, who Lo Yucho, Lahavachi, and Inyan Zeklao. This, you know, what everything that we're discussing won't make sense at all. So if you've got a person who's never been able to say, no, I, you know, I, I'm not going to smoke, he's never been able to say no, um, reading all of this is probably going to make absolutely no sense to him. Kinisiono Yore Lo, Shabacho Palm, Shahaya La Ratsan, La Davera. Haratzen sheyovad oso in motza, because every time he is in that same situation of feeling like you know I have the desire to smoke, that desire sort of overcomes everything else. It, it teaches him, it sways him in that direction, and he has there's no there's nothing else going on. There's no rational thinking whatsoever. And therefore, that person would never even understand what. Bechira really is. Ki eno roa besharshe masav ela sibos and sovim mebechutz. Rather, that person only sees um, or, or doesn't see the, the root of what's really causing his actions. He really only sees all of the sort of externalities, you know, the, the desires and the, and the, and the imagined, um, the imaginations or the, the, what comes out of his imagination. And, and he says something um, sort of just to go further with this point is that um, those who feel like, you know, who will say <clears throat> there's no such thing as Bechira, we don't have, there's no such thing as free choice. Ras um, He says that this is why we say things, this is why Chazal say that um, if you're going to be kofar, if you're going to deny Bechira whatsoever, what you're really doing is giving into the fact that, um, you know, just really giving into your own, giving into your own desires and, and really it's sort of the ugliness that goes along with that. Um, and we'll see in a moment where he also um, 
starts to explore more of what Chazal talk about. So let, let, let's get um, a little bit further. And I'll probably stop here um, at the end of this, uh, in the end of this parak, and then we'll pick up at Perak Bay's um, in a couple of weeks. But <clears throat> so he says, Nimzir Lomdim, Kitochen Abechi Rahatova, Hu Lahavchin Baachrus or Emes. Really, what we're talking about here is being able to distinguish and to be able to make choices based on the truth that we see and, and that we're able to rationally understand in the world. Rashi Metzius Zula Emes. And there's nothing else. There's nothing else. There's no other reality outside of that. And therefore, there aren't two desires. There's only one. There's the desire for truth. And that is the Korach of Akash Baruchu. Habechira Hara, he Shemavchin Gam Es Hasheker Kemitsius. And the wrong choice that we would make is when we start to see um, Sheker as reality, right? We start to see um, <clears throat> that. You know, whatever, whatever that desire is, that it is reality. The cigarettes themselves become my reality. So this is now what Rav Desner is sort of expanding now and sort of taking this to, or taking this into the direction of is when Chazal tell us that um, you know, what is it? What's the other, what's the other Rashus that's inside of a person? Is the Yitzhah Hara? When we, when we talk about those who listen to the Yitzhah, it's as if they are um, Ovid of Arazara or somebody who um, is somebody who's a Baal Qasim, who's always angry, is also, an, is like somebody who's an Ovid of Arazara. He says that's really all the same sort of idea. What we're really doing is we're allowing these um, other desires to take shape and to become a reality for us when they shouldn't be. And when we do that, what we're really doing is allowing in something outside of Kodesh Baruch Hu, really allowing something else in to say, no, there's other things that are important outside of the MS, outside of um, what Hashem has told us is, is the right things that we're supposed to be doing, the good that we're supposed to be doing. And that is the essence um, of the Sahara that sort of, you know, plants these ideas in our minds and, and shows us these desires. Um, and, and that's really the connection of Bihira, Yitzhahara, um, and, and, and really sort of cleaving to Emes and to what Akash Baruch was telling us that we should be doing. So um, just to, I think this is a, probably a good stopping point. Um, but really what we've- I have a question. Yeah, please. Take the uh, from Jew who smokes and right. he know he can stop on Shabbos and he does stop on Shabbos because he makes that choice that he's mm -hmm. observant, but the rest of the, he can't overcome his, uh, his Yetzirah Haram. So, and we're going to see this. I, I love that example because I think it is so true and I think it really drives on the point, right? He is able to, to see those two desires in front of him on Shabbos and say, no, I'm going towards the MS, which is Shabbos. Um, and, and not smoke. Yet during the rest of the other six days of the week, or on a two-day yuntif, on a three-day yuntif, you know, Yom Kippur, whatever it is. I mean, some might smoke on yuntif. That's a different thing. But, you know, he has it. I mean, it's so interesting, right? He has the ability to do it. He simply chooses not to during the other days. Um, and I think that's, but I think that's really the point that, that Rav Dessler is making is that you, you see how we do have the ability once we're set up correctly. And, that example, I think we'll come back to it in two weeks because in Perak Bays, that's really what he starts getting into is for each of us, where is the Bechira? Where does it sit for us? Um, and it's not a, you know, it's not static. It changes. It changes with us over time. It changes with us over what's going on in our lives. Um, but yeah, that's... Well, we mentioned before that he knows if he could stop once, he would see the truth. Here's a guy who stops every week. Exactly. Exactly. So in some ways he's able to do it when it comes to Shabbos, but, but during the week when it's just coming to about his health and understanding that he also has a mitzvah of, of keeping himself healthy, that he's not able to do it. So, um, okay. right. So, the, but it's a, it's a great example. Um, and, and it's so, and it really, but I think it just drives on the point that we do have the ability to do it. Like that's the great example. We do have the ability when you have that, once you're able to conquer it once and really have in your mind, 
the discipline to say, okay, I know that I'm going to have the desire today to smoke. I'm not going to give in because I know that there's no, there's, it's absolutely nothing to this desire. It's nothing but uh, sheker. It's nothing but uh, a big mess for me it's in my life. And I've got to just distance myself away from it. But you've got to overcome it once to, to get there. Um, and then you can start to, to build upon that. Um, so, yeah, that's, but I think you're right. That's exactly the sort of situation that Rav Dessler is, is describing here. Okay. Yep. And if you don't have to overcome it, if you have a decision between wrong and, and, and good, and you choose good just by, by whatever reason, that's not the hero. If you don't have to overcome it. Oh, so you're, so you're already getting to what, where Rav Desra is going. So, you know, the, yeah, like, here's a great example. Like, like for anybody who grew up keeping Shabbos, right? So not turning on a light switch on Shabbos, there's no Bechira there, right? We just don't do it because we're so used to it. We're so accustomed to it. That's not our battle. Um, I remember I had, a, I had a friend in yeshiva who didn't grow up from, right? So he so, so keeping Shabbos and Yantif was a new thing for him. And I remember after a three-day Yantif ended, we made Abdullah, and he went up to the light switch, and he starts doing this. He's like, I just got to do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. Because for him, not using the light switch really was Bechira. Like, it was hard for him. He had to really overcome himself. But for other people, it's not a problem whatsoever. There is no Bechira. Because it's, just, it's not an issue. We don't even think about it. And that's the essence of what we're going to get into in two weeks where, where uh, in Perak Bays he really gets into that, that that's really the nature of it is that, is that the, the line really is dependent on the person and it is dependent on, I think, your time of, you know, just where you are in life and wh what's going on in, in your world.